Hallelujah! It's New Moon Day. Yes, Yom Teruah, the first day of the seventh month, our day of remembrance and fast. We would like to thank our Berean friends in Ireland, as you can see here, that have taken the opportunity to get outside and test and prove all things with the sun, moon, and stars from our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself. And thank you to all of those Bereans all over earth that continue to provide scriptural studies in words, names, and the law, including the calendar. Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will be exploring if the Day of Trumpets known as Yom Teruah, is actually defined scripturally, etymologically, and astronomically as a day of remembrance, let alone a fast. We highly recommend that you view this scriptural study first, before proceeding with the rest of this clip. Because in this scriptural study, we will be exploring what the world and its religious institutions have consciously made us forget. Because, isn't it true that in the book of Psalms, chapter 81, verse 3, that this scriptural information provides guidance for everyone to remember the festival day of trumpets at the full moon? Doesn't the book of Waikra, known as Leviticus today, clarify that Yom Teruah is indeed the first day of the seventh month, which is indeed a day of remembrance? Doesn't the book of Bemenbar, now known as Numbers today, verify the same thing? And have you ever asked just what the scriptural word remembrance is referring to. The scriptural word remembrance and or zikron can be found in the Strong's H2146 entry. And its word origin is from an original Hebraic word known as zikar, with definitions such as memorial, remembrance, reminder, and or a sign. And hallelujah, we certainly can test and prove this annual sign for Yom Teruah with the sun, full moon, and scriptural stars, can't we? Even this resource provides evidence that this day of remembrance is about a sign, let alone a memorial and or reminder. And as well, this word... Zikron from the Strong's H2146 entry is derived from the original root word Zakar, as previously mentioned. As we can see here from the Strong's H2142 entry, which further defines the scriptural word remembrance as to recall, to cause to remember, and to record. And for those who number their days by recording the signs, yes, the signs that the sun, moon, and stars provide for the appointed times of Yahuwah. So then, the definitions of the word zakar provide further clarity etymologically as this evidence can indeed be recorded and forecasted let alone tested and proven astronomically on an annual basis. Even the ancient Hebrew lexicon concurs with this assessment and thus provides a further witness with the original pictographic language for the word zakar and or remembrance, which is associated to being reminded of a man-child Yes, as a ram, as per the associated Strong's Concordance entries. Coincidence? Of course not. 
Because isn't this the value noble Bereans receive with constantly doing comprehensive etymological word studies with the scriptures? Isn't this why noble Bereans recognize that all scripture is breathed by the Almighty Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, and as profitably taught and as exemplified by the morning star. Yes, the Lamb himself. Yes, the branch known as the Messiah, Yahushua, who is our only teacher. But again, world religions do not think scriptural studies with words, names, and the law, which includes the calendar, are profitable. Now do they? As an example, what about the study of scriptural names? Because can this help us with what we must be remembering during Yom Teruah, which is a day of remembrance? Do we remember the word Zakar and its definition, which literally means to cause to remember, to recall, to call to mind? Is it any coincidence then that the prophet's name Zechariah, now known today as Zechariah, means Yahuwah remembers, but in proper form literally means remember Yahuwah? Yes, during Yom Teruah, let's not forget that our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, provides marks and or signs in the Shamaim that are to be remembered, that are indeed on the first day of remembrance on the seventh month, that the scriptures verify. So, is it any coincidence then that the prophet Zechariah, whose name literally means remember Yahuwah, states that there are four fasts in a year for those in the house of Yahuda, which includes a fast on the first day of the seventh month of Yom Teruah, which provides a love of the truth and peace. And of course, for those who desire to remain in the house of Yahuda, they then are fully aware that the name Yahuda is derived from the root word yada, which literally means those who praise Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, with and at the doorway. And we know who and where the doorway is, don't we? And yes, as regrettable as it is, it is an empirical fact let alone an undeniable truth that the world and its world religions do not think it profitable for anyone to know this information. Because the main question received from those still baptized in some form and or another in world religions is this. How can we know the four fasts occurred on new moon days? which are always the first day of the month. Well, isn't the scripture crystal clear that it does indeed state that the house of Yehuda gathers on the first day of the seventh month, which is indeed a day of remembrance? Because doesn't the book of Jubilees state that there are four days of remembrance? and that the first day of the seventh new moon and or month is one of them? And yes, we know the wrath of the Catholic Church will come down upon you if you read the Book of Jubilees. At least that was the message I received 42 years ago now, when I was 18 years of age. And they even chastised me for my interest in the Book of Enoch as well. And I always wondered why. We learnt in time that they as well did not want anyone to study scriptural words, names, and the law 
including the scriptural calendar. Because if you did, you would indeed, in time, learn about the first day of the seventh month and the associated signs in the Shamaim, and that it is a day of remembrance and a fast, just as the scriptures verify. But again, as per scripture, we must test and prove all things and hold on to what is good. So, as an example, the book of Jubilees verifies that the sun and stars, working together as one in perfect harmony to tell time, will produce a 364-day cycle annually, thus keeping all of the feasts intact on an annual basis. While the Book of Enoch, known anciently as Hanok, verifies the very same thing. But can we test and prove this here and now? We can, can we? Because just as Eob knew, many Bereans today are aware that the scriptural seven star cluster known as the bear moves counterclockwise around the North Star daily in 23.934 hours per day. And when multiplied by a 365.25 solar day year, this then equates to 8,741.89 hours annually, which equates to 364.25 days annually. So, in this case, Jubilees and Hanok can be tested and proven annually, both scripturally and astronomically, just as Hanok's 177 day count annually from Abib to the day of remembrance and fast of Yom Teruah can be tested and proven year after year in their proper seasons. Just as the four days of remembrance from the Book of Jubilees summarize astronomically the four divisions and or seasons of the year, which can be verified with the sun, moon, and stars annually in their proper seasons, just like the Hanok 177 day count proves annually in creation with the four days of remembrance and the four fasts just like the prophet Zechariah stated whose name literally means remember Yahuwah yes the house of Yahuda will understand why the first day of the seventh month is indeed a day of remembrance, and a fast, just as Zachariah stated. Which, of course, world religions do everything in their power to get you to forget through their various book-banning methods all through time. But why do they do this? Have you ever heard of the saying, what you learn first, you learn best? Have you ever taken the time to learn why a Catholic priest spends five years in seminary and two years of pastoral practice, and in all that time, it is usually spent in a seminary indoors? Catholic priests, let alone all Christian pastors, and yes, the so-called leaders in Judaism and Islam within the thousands of religious organizations worldwide never, never get any training on the very first page of Scripture, let alone the undeniable fact that they do not receive any training outside in creation under the expanse of the heavens to learn how the sun, moon, and stars can be utilized to number their days, with an intent to learn why the sun, moon, and stars were to be for signs and appointed times. Yes, 
And as regrettable as it is, they are not aware of the scriptural witnesses of light, which were created and designed to witness the days of remembrance and fasts. So, as an example, what do these so-called priests and Christian pastors learning indoors for almost seven years at a time? Yes, they are learning from theologians with a filtered Christ-centered Bible commentary and or what is known as a Christ-centered Bible exposition. Theologians do not share scriptural words, names in the law, including the calendar, as the Apostle Shaul did. As theologians are systematically trained to not be a judge of these matters. Yes, the history of Christian theology is clear. They have promoted everything but the appointed times of Yahuwah, let alone the fact that Christian theology has ensured that everyone forgets about the name of Yahuwah. As an example, let's do a deep dive exposition on a theologian by the name of John Gill and his take on the scriptural verse from Zechariah chapter 8 verse 19. Because this Christ-centered theologian even gets the question wrong, as laid out in chapter 7 of the book of Zechariah. Because the question is not based on whether we are to do and or not to do the fasts, but rather if we do indeed do them, are we ensuring that we are doing them for Yahuwah and Yahuwah alone? And John Gill's exposition and or commentary of the fourth month fast incorrectly states it occurred on the ninth day of the fourth month and further incorrectly states that the fast of the fifth month was on the tenth day. And finally, to add insult to injury, states incorrectly again that the fast of the seventh month took place on the third day, when in fact, yes, scriptural facts, the fasts always occur on the first day of a month. And yes, the first day of the seventh month was Yom Teruah, a day of remembrance and a fast that can be proven scripturally, etymologically, and astronomically. So why the grievous errors by this Christ-centered theologian by the name of John Gill? Because it is extremely easy to prove that John Gill's faulty source of information was from the Mammonides, who wrote about Babylonian fasts, and not the fasts that Zechariah shared in the scripture. Worse yet, who were these Mammonides? Yes, you got it, Jewish philosophers. And we are aware of what the Apostle Shaul stated about making sure that no one makes a prey of any of us through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary matters of the world, and not according to Messiah. And even more embarrassing is this fact, that I still have trouble admitting I personally fell for this Mammonides movement of empty deceit for almost four decades and only started to come out of her in my early 40s. Please remember, this Mammonide movement attempted to replace the scriptures with the Talmud and thus why many noble Bereans firmly believe this is what the prophet Yirmiyahu was referring to. 
when it came to people struggling with the days of remembrance and fasts. And is this why our only teacher, the Messiah Yahushua, stated to the Pharisees and Sadducees, they would not be able to discern the face of the heaven and or the signs of the times? Proving further why theologians struggle so to this very day as well with discerning the times. As some say, there is nothing scripturally logical about theology, as it always produces the world's best example of irony, rather than guiding people to always remember Yahuwah. But, hallelujah, noble brands will remain diligent with scriptural word, name, and law studies, including the calendar, even though those who remain baptized in world religions to this day do not want to be a judge of these matters. So, when it comes to the day of remembrance known as Yom Teruah and the fast, who and what are you going to trust? Are you going to trust what the scriptures share? as verified by the scriptural etymology, let alone as verified with the astronomical scriptural witnesses of light annually? And or are you going to trust Christ-centered theologians who rely on Jewish Talmudic philosophers? Because Bereans acknowledge that there is so much more to learn and that we all must rely and remember that Yahuwah shall turn unto the peoples a clean lip so that they all shall call on the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one shoulder. So we continue on to do our utmost to present ourselves approved to the Almighty One. Workers who do not need to be ashamed of rightly handling the word of truth with our proposed scriptural study formats. All the while acknowledging that we all but have only one teacher and leader, and that is the Messiah, Yahushua. And as Bereans, we fully recognize our present human frailty just like others in the past recognized that we all must put off the old man and put on the new. Moving from the vicious cycle, so to speak, to the virtuous. And always allowing iron to sharpen iron. Recognizing that the sparks will always be quenched by the living waters and the fruit of the Spirit these waters provide. Yom Teruah, everyone, on this day of remembrance and fast.